To see where we're at with those two donation incentives. To see Taskbot play Celeste all berries, we need $175,000. We currently have $39,234.84. To see the bonus scenes in Transistor, we need $10,000, of which we have currently have $1,504.31. So if you want to see those, get your donations in. All right, speaking of Transistor, we have $30 from Nimims, donating to support the Transistor bonus incentive. Sometimes Red just needs to break. And with that, we are ready to get started with our Therion single-story run of Octopath Traveler. Take it away. Oh, everybody is getting the three percent they want, or at least the crowd is. <laughs> Just uh, before I begin, and this uh, incentive raised fourteen thousand dollars, and that's just amazing to me. So, <laughs> and so thank you all for your generous donation. Don't forget the extra almost eleven thousand dollars for petting the dog. Yeah. Yes, that too. So twenty-four thousand total. <laughs> so, with that, I'm ready to go. Here, Are you guys ready? Yeah. We're ready. All right. Three, two, one, go. So uh, why don't we begin with some introductions here at the couch, uh, starting with... Uh, hi, I'm Oro. Uh, I was representing Hanit and Ulbrich in the bid war. Yeah, I'm Mamgar. I was representing Primrose and Tressa. I'm Mark, I'm Mark Carriott. I was representing Cyrus and Alfin. Oh, and <laughs> oh, shucks. <laughs> and I'm Altabiscuit, and I'm representing Therian, obviously, and Ophelia. So, um, first thing you'll notice about this game is we can skip cutscenes by holding down the B button. It's very nice. It cuts down on a lot of time. And I can't imagine how much mashing there would be if, there, if that wasn't the case. So, uh, Therian's path action as the thief is uh, he can steal items. And uh, every uh, intro for the character or uses their path action. So, the first thing we're going to do is a steal a bunch of soul stones from this merchant. The soul stones are items that will deal flat damage to enemies. Yeah, and they all have an element tied to them so they can be used for weaknesses and various things like that. The voice lines in this game are great. <laughs> and so we'll get more into the battle system once uh, we start getting into some fights, but we just got to get through the uh, introduction here. You know, Therian needs to steal some letter of introduction to get into Ravis Manor, which has these dragon stones in them, which are impossible to steal or something. All right, so I'm going to get the arcane knife there. That's going to increase my elemental damage in a little bit, which will uh, reduce the number of turns we need for the uh, first boss. Let's send, uh, that's, uh, there's going to be one other dagger that we pick up later, or which is uh, called the Viper Dagger. Or it's uh, one of the strongest daggers in the game. We get that from a really high-level dungeon, but we're probably about 30 minutes away from that. And this music... <laughs> I love the cliff... I love the, uh, the music here. Just the music in this game is really great in general. <laughs> There are very few tracks that I would say are not great. The version of that song on the arranged soundtrack is also extremely good. Wow, that was really late. <laughs> yeah, that was. So. On, I've got better things to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we gotta go fast. So, uh, somebody want to explain how breaking works? So. Every enemy has a set of weaknesses represented by those little question marks under their name. Um, every enemy has the same ones every time. They're not random or anything. Um, and when you reduce the number of shields that the enemy has to zero, they're broken, uh, which increases the damage they take, and it lets you guarantee a runaway. So a lot of these early encounters here, you're going to see Alta breaking the enemy and then immediately fleeing to guarantee the runaway. You can just YOLO the runaways, but it's about a five or six second difference to just break them and uh, get a little bit more consistency. And there's a couple other scenarios where you can just run away for free. One is if you uh, catch your enemy by surprise or uh, if they're asleep. Uh, is this two encounter Ravis? Oh, oh very close. That was like an inch I'll off. Make this quick. I'm a little sad I didn't get the ice sentinel, but oh well. 
<laughs> oh my god. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, there's a strat. Therian uh, has the lowest chance of being able to kill a Kate. <laughs> And he needs a soul stone to do it. Yeah, so Kates are enemies that are kind of like gold hands in Persona 4, if you're familiar with that. But they're like high experience, high gold, high JP enemies. They're really rare spawns. There's three different varieties of them. Um, almost every single character, single story, I think actually every single one now, relies pretty heavily to go for really good times to get a Kate in an early encounter. And yeah, like Alta said, Therian has a really rough time killing them. So yeah, this fight is mostly just throw all the soul stones I collected from that one merchant. Uh, yeah, it should be okay here. Take this. While also weakening Heathcote here. Uh, somebody want to explain how the BP system works here? <laughs> yeah, so you see those little orange dots under Therian's name. Um, this game is kind of a spiritual successor to the Bravely series. Um, and it, like the Bravely series, incorporates um, this stacking uh, stat that you can boost into your attacks. So for every time you boost, you can boost up to a maximum of three times um, using those orange spheres at the top. Um, and it gives some attacks more hits and generally is going to just deal more damage. And there's kind of a scaling multiplier on that. Um, one thing that's heavily considered in the routing as well is that after you boost a move, you don't gain a BP on the next turn. Uh, and that actually comes into play a lot throughout all of the categories. There are also items that give you BP called pomegranates. And there's the uh, arcane knife that I bought earlier. Allow me to kill him there. <laughs> yeah, speaking of pomegranates, uh, Heathcote is guaranteed to drop a palm M which uh, gives two BP. I think the large gives four. Yeah. yeah. And That's the small one, gives four. one. Speaking of one, I'm going to steal one on the way out, as well as a nourishing nut. Um, <laughs> yeah, the nourishing nut increases Therion's maximum HP. And uh, despite him being a thief, and you would think uh, he's got low HP because of it, he's actually going to be the tank for this run. We pick up the warrior job later on. And... Uh, you know, even if you're not a huge fan of Therion, he, uh, he dies a lot in this category. <laughs> so, so if you're not a fan of him, you can uh, take some solace that he will be the sacrifice. <laughs> so the map is kind of divided into three rings. The first ring contains all the characters' chapter ones, and they're go in clockwise, go in octopath order. By the way, the first letter of each their name spells out octopath. <laughs> so, so after Therion's Hanit's area... I thought it spelled out Taco Cat. You're right. It's spelled <laughs> oh, Taco yes, Cat. of course. <laughs> so a double enemy encounter is what you don't want to see because there's no way you can break them. You just have to go for the flea. And Thankfully, this game does have a built-in security feature with the runaways that if you survive to the fourth turn and run away that many times, uh, you get a guaranteed flea. So there's only so bad it can get, essentially. Mm -hmm. So... In general, how most single stories are going to go is once uh, you complete their chapter one, you're going to go get evasive maneuvers. And that's an ability which uh, decreases the encounter rate by about three times, roughly. A lot. And, so, <laughs> yeah. and uh, it most, uh, with the exception of Ulbrich, um, all the other, uh, uh, all the other single story runs basically make blitz for Cyrus. <laughs> because he's the scholar class that has that. Yeah, so Hanit and Ulbrich differ a little bit because their uh, path actions allow them to fight NPCs, which resets their step counter as far as getting encounters. So they're able to go uh, near Noble Court and go get the Scholar Shrine and use that method to get evasive maneuvers. Hanit gets Cyrus anyway because they want to have two Scholar jobs, but it's kind of a little cheaty way they can get in there. Yeah. In the second ring around the map, there's a job tied to each character based on what character's in the first ring. All right, so the uh, first stop on my trip to Atlas Dam where Cyrus is, we're going to stop by Swarky, which is where uh, Hanit is. Um, I'm not going to pick up Hanit just yet. We're not really equipped to deal with that yet. And so um, if there's any solace for the people that donated for Hanit, she will be an important part of the party here, here during this story. So. Come on, I've got better things to do. Oh, boy. Oh. <laughs> it begins. Yep. Thankfully, it's only one enemy. Yeah. Getting caught by a surprise by uh, two enemies can be pretty treacherous, especially since you can't break them. 
And Therian cannot heal himself outside of items, which you can run out of. Yeah, that's uh, that makes his uh, trek to Atlas Dam a little bit sketchy, but the nourishing nut helps with that a bit. So this, uh, this area is not very good for Therion because he can't really break enemies easily. The best option he has available is Wildfire. And spells take a lot longer animation to break, so it's just faster to go for the Yellow Flea. And even if you fail once, it's still slightly faster than trying to break with a spell. I may need to heal soon. In fact, I'll just do that now, just to be safe. So I just uh, give Therion the Nourishing Nut on that same menu there, or since I'm there anyway. This is the beginning of your end. <laughs> now nah, we're just gonna run away from you. Okay. <laughs> I thought it was about I thought I was about to eat my words there. There's so uh, two encounters on the screen, that's nice. Uh, anybody wanna explain how the step counter works in this? Well, we actually know how it works because of the PC stuff, but basically yeah. uh, as you walk you Come fill up on, a counter that has a hidden number of steps before you get an encounter. Having evasive maneuvers makes it take longer for that gauge to fill up, but once it fills up, you get an encounter. So it is a bit of a range when you can get an encounter, but we have a pretty good idea of when you're supposed to get an encounter and can plan around it, kind of. Yeah, and there's a handful of things that can reset that counter, too, like uh, transitions into uh, new areas. There are a couple of, ex of exceptions to that that we'll get into when they're relevant. Oh, this is actually good. Oh, well, not that, <laughs> but... <laughs> But I need to uh, kill this fox for the JP since I didn't get an, a nice sentinel in the Ravis Manor. So JP are uh, job points. They are uh, basically what let you teach skills. I don't have enough yet to teach any, but shortly after I pick up Cyrus, I'm going to teach uh, skill to Therion to help uh, kill Russell, who's the Cyrus's chapter one boss. So. This area is a little bit scary. There's an encounter that uh, has two ants, and they do a lot of damage, and if I get unlucky, I might die. This is the of your anyway. <laughs> we're not, we're not scared of frogs yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm probably gonna have to heal after this fight. <laughs> Luckily, a grape is just open the menu and mash A. <laughs> Yeah, and grapes conveniently heal for a lot in the early game. They're basically your entire health bar. I believe it's 500. Yeah. 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 They, honestly, considering how fast you can feed them to people, they're really efficient healing in general. Oh, Not in a battle, of course, but. My turn. All right, and Therian can't break anything in Atlas Dam Flats, so you just have no choice but to run. You'll notice in the game that uh, the closer you are to a character's starting point, the more likely you are to be able to break encounters there with uh, one way or another. All right, so this is Cyrus. We talked about him a little bit. Um, he's basically, he's a scholar, and that's the mage class. Um, we're not going to use him too much for that. We just want him for evasive maneuvers, and he just happens to be the best way to get it. Cyrus has a much bigger role in the longer categories. He's that do all the stories and uh, beat the final boss. That's at the end where he's a sorcerer for most of the game. But uh, he's essentially nothing more than a pomegranate bot in this run. <laughs> so scrutinize, you can uh, find hidden items that way. I picked up a light soul stone M right there. It does uh, 1100 damage inch to an unbroken target and 2200 to a broken target. So that's pretty significant damage for this early in the game. And I'm going to use that to uh, help kill the uh, first boss here. And so I'm basically guaranteed to get two encounters here. And that's convenient because I need the JP anyway. And these Sentinels give five each. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that's like the third back attack here. Yeah, so Cyrus does have an ability in battles where he'll analyze the enemy and reveal one of their weaknesses, which obviously in a speedrun we know all their weaknesses, so it doesn't really matter too much. And you'd think, wow, that wastes a little bit of time every fight. Like, doesn't that add up and make Cyrus just not really worth it? It just ends up being a lot better to get Cyrus most of the time anyway. This category is just, or like most of the categories are just short enough that it doesn't add up to be enough. 
Yeah, and Cyrus is also next door to Tressa, who happens to be a merchant, and that's the best base class in the game. So. Yeah. I believe Tressa's used in all eight single stories. No, you don't. Yeah, and Cyrus yeah, is used in all but one. Yeah, depending on how optimal it is, you shouldn't be picking up Cyrus like best case scenario in a couple, but yeah, most categories grab Cyrus. All right. Teaching HP Thief to Therion there, it does a pretty significant damage here with the equipment that I have. No, we won't. Let's deal with that. <laughs> There also is a bit of an issue with the um, like the skill menus in this game. Uh, whenever you have a tutorial in the menu and you close it too quickly, you actually can softlock. I believe it's frame perfect, um, but it's happened to me on like a bunch of Ulbrick runs, and since then I've been paranoid of it in every other category. Generally, you're not going to hit it, but take this. All right. So since Cyrus had to break, Cyrus is going to have to get the kill here because as uh, the extra damage from HP Thief actually matters there. So <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. I got a nice soul stone drop. That's convenient. So that light soul stone that I picked up earlier is typically used for. Uh, a lovely little encounter in a place called Whistlewood, and uh, every single runner hates the, that place because it's the most efficient way to get JP for evasive maneuvers, and you're not always guaranteed to get the encounter you want, and that gives over 100 JP. So if you're going for, like, record attempts or anything, you're going to want to get that first try. Hey, but since uh, I'm in a marathon, I'm just going to... Uh, take whatever encounters I get on the way, and just so we're not waiting there forever. Yeah, thankfully, since he has Cyrus in his party, the enemies in the first ring level up a little bit. There's more of them in fights. There are some pretty good encounters that we can kill in outside of Cyrus, particularly ones involving the ants from earlier that give a lot of JP. So, you know, everybody is hyping about the 3%, but there's actually an 8% steal earlier here. <laughs> Here to get a Shadow Soul Stone. Um, there's an alternate uh, strat which doesn't involve getting this, but it's about a minute or so detour. Whoops, that's the wrong one. A little ahead of myself. Uh, nice. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I've been getting that in the first five so frequently lately. I was expecting that to not happen. <laughs> yep. <laughs> So the nice thing about the steals is they come in groups of five before you have to reset your reputation or just reload your file. Um, so you can get five attempts in really Ooh, this quick. This is a good encounter. The other nice thing about Cyrus having lightning blast is one of the encounters in Whistlewood that gives you enough uh, JP to proceed is owls, or I believe they're called howlers. Howlers. Um, and they actually don't die to a single soul stone, but um, Cyrus can break them pretty easily, so. So in total, we're going to need 130 JP on Cyrus. We already spent 30, so we just need 100 more. And yeah, that encounter we got there gives uh, 17 JP, which is the second best encounter, aside, Kate's aside. But um, the uh, best one is three ants. They give six JP each, and the meeps give uh, five JP. Come on, eh. got to do. I'll still kill this one, even if it's not... A great encounter. I'm expecting the frog and six to be replaced by a Kate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we can explain the frog and six, I guess, now since we're almost in Whistlewood. There's one encounter you absolutely cannot kill, and that's the frog and six. It's super rare, though. Yeah, so in general, Whistlewood, we want to see sud bugs, which are these little wormy things, or birds, howlers as they're called. Those are the good encounters that give lots of JP. Frogs are bad, and the big frog with two little bug friends is especially bad. Right. Usually you get frogs, though. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, no. There he is. <laughs> Unclog the frog. <laughs> Unbelievable. Well, good night, Therian and Cyrus. Oh, Therian lived. Oh my god. Yeah, that, that's, that's the nourishing nut at work, but you're about to see how much damage this does. 
Good night, Cyrus. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy that happened. <laughs> it would have been it's funnier perfect. if it was by Kate. And that encounter, you can take whatever encounter you get in here and just kind of farm. That encounter, we just can't kill. He's too high leveled. Yeah, the only single story that can even think about killing it is Primrose if you get a 5% allure. But to make it even a bigger kick in the pants, you you can't even get enough JP for evasive maneuvers from that. This one is really rare. Yeah, and this is the <laughs> ideal one, too. So. We got the two rarest encounters. <laughs> yeah, there's always the chance, too, that you get the right encounter and then you get caught by surprise and die anyway, which is just great. It, it, it doesn't say it right away either, so you're, you're just, like, left with like, a little bit of hope at first, and then it's like, nah, you're just... <laughs> <laughs> and the really annoying part is all the good encounters, if you get caught by surprise, they'll kill you on the first turn. The bad encounters won't kill you. They'll just sit around flexing their frog muscles. <laughs> they're, they're actually doing that. They're actually flexing. So we're going to head over to Noble Court, which is a, a second ring area. That's where Therion's Chapter 2 is. There also happens to be some items that we want over there, so that's just convenient to tag it now so we can warp back later. Yeah. By the way, you can fast travel at any point you want as long as you've been to the town first. You can also press B to run, which apparently a lot of people didn't know about this mm -hmm. game. Yeah, I didn't know that either until I, <laughs> somebody told me. You can fast travel inside of caves, which I didn't know for a long time because of any other game that has fast travel. And we're not going to finish Thier or Therian's Chapter 2 right now, but we're going to start it because it's generally slower to... Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> Dang. So I got to reload the save because I lost uh, my reputation there. Here's your preview for later. <laughs> <laughs> He's scrutinizing that person for a soul stone. But in general, starting chapters as soon as you get access to them is faster because otherwise you have to go to the tavern and ask the tavern keeper to please tell you to continue mm -hmm. the story. Mm -hmm. Which, uh, there's a lot of extra money in Therian's story conveniently, but... Um, in this case, the tavern's like on the opposite side of town, so it's just better to reset reputation. And in that case, and first try, of course. Nice. <laughs> so I'm going to scrutinize this guy for thieving tips and tricks. That'll make stealing later on easier. And it's... Okay. Oh <laughs> All right. Usually that 70% guy gives me trouble for some reason. Because this is this this game has Pokemon superstitions where seventy percent is actually zero percent. <laughs> the Thunder Fallacy. Yes. <laughs> now I'm going to be running around here just doing part of Therian's chapter two. You can probably read a couple donations during this. Oh uh, sure, I've got a lot of them. Let's start off with a thousand dollars from the Dope Fish. Nice. nice. I love playing Octopath casually, but I've only seen speedruns for Tressa. I'm still waiting for a mashup with a certain perfectly normal dad who can beat all eight character routes simultaneously. Also, hashtag Octothorpe. Uh, $100 from Sunny Muffin. Good luck on the run, Alta. Hope 3% treats you well. Donating in another $3 for every failed steal. If we can't go fast, we can at least raise more money. Shoutouts to Bagel Bites. Yeah. <laughs> And I have $100 from Jello. Spout all the pretty words you like. You know the truth. <laughs> she will never again know the happiness she once did. Why do you rob your sister of the hope I offer her? What else does she have but that futile wish? Uh, good luck to the runners. Bagel bites are worse than pizza rolls. <laughs> So uh, we should probably give a little bit of context, but... I don't know. It's kind of better without. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. But let me just say that the console versus PC divide is not the most heated argument. In the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jello was uh, quoting uh, Matthias, which is Ophelia's final boss. Spoilers. <laughs> oh, wait, sorry. <laughs> It might be her final boss. It might be her final boss. It's heavily implied. <laughs> so that chest that we just opened is a purple chest, which we require Therian to open, and conveniently we have Therian because we started with him. So mm -hmm. Funny how that works. Purple chests unlock just so much money, which is another reason why Therian tends to be picked up in the other single-story routes, that and Armor Corrosive. But uh, there was kind of a period of time where everyone tried to route out Therian from everything. <laughs> yeah, we had a little trouble doing that with this category for some reason. Yeah, I don't know why. 
We did it with Alfin, though. Alfin got routed out of everything. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, oh shucks. shucks. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to uh, Ripple Tide next, which is where Tressa is after a word from this case. <laughs> <laughs> they are. All right. Well, if uh, heals, uh... groom, groom, groom. Yes. 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 Oh my. Do I have a soul? Actually, Cyrus is. Cyrus uh, is going. Yeah, first. Cyrus oh. is going. So this is a uh, is guaranteed. <laughs> We're gonna see the effect of this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I just gained like 12 levels from that. <laughs> yeah, that'll be real nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. Kates are pretty rare. It's about 3% for any given encounter to contain one. 3%? So. 3%. 3%. 3%. <laughs> yeah. He said the number. <laughs> <laughs> so. It, getting a Kate before um, Cyrus is kind of a big deal because you can skip Whistlewood in most cases, but um, it's still nice getting it for Therian in this case just because it makes uh, a lot of the steals later on guaranteed, and it gives them a bit of HP as a buffer. Or because uh, some of the fights, um, we have it set up in such a way to where Therian will survive, but sometimes bad luck or crits can still ruin it, so this will... Uh, Give us a nice, nice buffer for that. Now it's time to see. Now, now that I'm being recorded here on this run, I always seem to never run away from this encounter here, here on the first try. And now that I've said that, I just got to go for it. I'm not going to break it. That would be right. funny if you didn't get it at all. You know, I've been very <laughs> close, but it hasn't happened yet. <laughs> yep, Dang, <there laughs> every <it> time. <laughs> so, part of uh, what we were doing in Noble Court earlier was grabbing a large Thunder Soul Stone, and that's what we're going to use to kill uh, Tress's Chapter 1 boss. Uh, so that's the, uh, after getting evasive maneuvers, the general theme in most single stories is to run around the overworld a bit, collect uh, a bunch of items and money, and then go do the thing. <laughs> yeah, so, Tressa is important for the run because she is a merchant and she is really good at doing literally everything involving money. She can spend money to get items, she can find more money from unfortunate souls. <laughs> they just like leave it everywhere. I know, it's crazy. It's like every loading zone you go through, uh, you just find money because of Tressa's passive. She can also hire thugs to beat up her enemies and that's pretty important. <laughs> Remember that for later. Yes, yes. There will be a test. Yeah, I, I seem to recall, at least when they were advertising this game, that they were, like, hyping up the merchant. And just because, you know, people would probably think that they're, they're uh, a weaker class. I don't know. They're good at money. If you're thinking of the value... <laughs> Okay. Sometimes it'll point to the other enemy, just as because reasons. The menus can be a little bit wonky sometimes. Yeah, so we actually are breaking Mac there because he doesn't die to the Thunder Soul Stone. He's not weak to Thunder like Mick is. Yeah, other single stories will throw a Wind Soul Stone mm -hmm. on instead, which does uh, kill both of them in one go without breaking. It's just there's no Wind Soul Stones that are conveniently near Therion. That, that's generally with the items, the strategies that you collect items with is uh, you just get whatever's close by. And there, there turns out to be a lot of high-level dungeons as they have a lot of money. We'll get a short preview of Tressa's uh, theme here. You know, I can't believe we didn't even say bye to Ma and Pa. Uh, <laughs> we can come back later. Okay. <laughs> So the compositions for this game are actually really interesting and really well done. Every character kind of has an instrument associated with them. Um, and that kind of ties into their general theming of their stories. Um, so there's a little bit of extra little flavor to every character's themes. And you're going to hear that as well with the boss intros. You've been hearing it already. Yeah, the only a little annoying part about running this game is the characters actually have some really good long themes, and we skip a lot of those mm -hmm. themes. Yeah. 
All right, I'm going to take a short detour here. It's about three seconds just to pick up this small uh, pomegranate. Um, if, uh, if this were a real attempt, I would skip that and hope that an enemy later drops it, but it's, it's three seconds, so it's whatever. Um, I mentioned it earlier here, but this is the uh, warrior shrine. Therian's going to become our warrior later on, on just to protect the uh, rest of the party. And I believe uh, Arcaria mentioned this earlier, but in the second ring, every uh, base job has a shrine. And so you can give uh, every character uh, two classes. And that's really casually where the game really opened up for me. And just a lot of strategies is un unfolded there. So this is probably a good time to do a couple donations too, because this is the point in the run where we're going to be running around tagging uh, towns that we need to visit later. Yeah. And collecting items and stuff. Sure thing. Uh, let's kick it off with $250 from Saxon Fox. <laughs> Greetings from the audience. I'm pleased to donate to such a worthwhile cause, but also I'm doing my part to get my guy Therion on stage. Time to steal the show. <laughs> uh, we have $20 from Kerbifer. Hey, this is the voice actor for Therion. Thanks so much for playing this game, for picking my favorite thief for your adventure, and for raising an incredible million bucks for charity. Now, can anyone show me the nearest tavern already? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, $25 from Tony Piz. Having worked on the Italian localization for Octopath Traveler, I have a soft spot for this game, so this seems a perfect time to finally donate. Keep up the good work, guys. $15 from Goldbargs233. Hi, GDQ. Hope you like the run as much as we do. Shout out to all the Octopath speedrun community and the memes that go along with it. Also, I'll donate another $15 if Chapter 3 is done in mini glitch mode. I don't even know how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> sure we have enough collective knowledge here to be able to figure it out. Uh, we have a $200 anonymous donation. Uh, GDQ has always been one of my favorite events, and I'm always happy to donate to Doctors Without Borders. <laughs> Much love from the Netherlands. Money goes towards tasks conquering the world, or at least the world of Celeste. So this is Marcelum Catacombs. It is... Etherian and Ulbrich have the only glitch that is useful in the, uh, in the run, at least on Switch. This doesn't exist in PC, which will become pretty obvious why in a second. Um, we'll need that revitalizing jam for later, but... Uh, we get to see what games he's playing. Oh no, now everyone knows I play Fortnite. <laughs> <laughs> and Slay the Spire. Great game, by the way. Mamgar's been playing it all week. <laughs> yeah, so basically what's happening there is at the end of every one of these optional dungeons, there's a mini-boss at the end guarding a, po a powerful item. Um, but what we can do is go into the trigger for it and then kind of buffer and uh, uh, holding up into the, the cutscene again, um, open our home menu and then go back in at a certain point, and then it'll just push us past the kind of invisible barrier trigger. Um, so we can just go right in and grab the item and then use the same. When we go back, it just kicks us out, so we can just use it to go back out. And conveniently enough, that resets our step counter as well. So, Yeah, it's also useful for getting around story triggers. You think that would be more useful than it is, but in this game, a lot of story triggers literally don't exist until you've done the prerequisites for them. So, By the way, Marcelum Catacombs is a really sketchy screen. Uh, it's a, in my experience, it's been about 50-50 to get an encounter on there, so that was pretty lucky. Yeah, it used to be a safe screen until recent developments in the route. <laughs> Shout out to Dahlia. <laughs> yeah, Dahlia is a pretty uh, established router and runner in this game. He He's had a hand in like every route that this game's ever had. He also maintains all the routes on the Discord, so that's, that's just no small task. So mm -hmm. just, it can't be emphasized how much value he is to the community. All right, now it's time to go pick up on it. Now that we have enough soul stones to throw at everything. You know, it's a funny coincidence. This is the party that we had for the Tressa run, just in a different order. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Conveniently, this is also the party for Hanit's right? <laughs> <laughs> it's almost as if these characters are uh, good or something. Yes. <laughs> 
So um, normally when we're doing attempts, we uh, play this game with Japanese voices because as uh, Han, it's a bit uh, long-winded, to put it lightly. <laughs> Yeah, and before your initial action in combat, you have to wait for them to start or finish whatever line they start, and Hanitz is uh, pretty, pretty long. Standest thou against me, then be hunted. Well, there's like a year-long pause in between those sentences. Yeah. Too. Standest thou against me, then be hunted. <laughs> I was getting to it. <laughs> well, we might, we might hear it here. Hanitz's not going to talk too much since... We only fight our chapter one boss here. Yeah, funnily enough, it's the opposite for Ulbrich, who has really long Japanese voice lines. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if this be as thy will. So, Gisarma can be actually a little scary. Ooh, we got Hanit first. Okay. Nice. Okay. Hanit popping off. So we're going to get the best Gisarma fight, but if Gisarma gets a turn, it has a chance to kill off some of your party. Yep. So basically, he uses a move called Rampage, which just hits random party members a random amount of times, and he likes to hit Hanit with it for some reason. She has a magnet glued to her back. I think that's the <laughs> canon explanation. Strangely powerful boss for a Chapter 1 boss. Yeah, Gasarma has a lot of HP. A lot of the other Chapter 1 bosses have lower HP to kind of balance out the fact that they have ads accompanying them, but Gisarma just has himself, so... Yeah, the stories that pick up on it, they save her for last for that reason most of the time. Okay, so I got a menu coming up here where I'm going to make Theory on my warrior, give him that Viper Dagger that we picked up earlier and some other stuff. Got enough for 1,000 spears, thanks to the Kate. Menuing is the highest form of speedrunning. Yeah, and I forgot to press L and R to make that faster, too. So to quickly explain the abilities that we just got, we just got Armor Corrosive for Therian, which reduces the uh, defenses of whatever enemy it's on. Um, so that's generally just useful for doing a lot more damage, which is pretty self-explanatory. Um, I believe the next one we got was Insight on Warrior Therian, which is uh, kind of a taunt. It just makes the enemy's target, um, whoever uses it, um, Thousand Spears is a version of Reign of Arrows, which you just saw, but it uses a spear instead, which is extremely useful for breaking enemies quickly. Um, we also got Hired Help on Tressa, which is our main uh, ability that deals damage by sinking a lot of money into it. And one of the important things about Armor Corrosive is Armor Corrosive and Defense Down is one of the only ways you can increase the damage from Hired Help. It's oh, we not, oh, sorry. Go ahead. It's not like physical skills or magic abilities that you can buff the bearer. The damage from veterans, hired help veterans, is independent of your own stats. The only way to increase it is a debuff. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. We also got Leg Hold Trap on Hanit, which uh, pushes um, the enemy turns all the way to the back, uh, which is extremely useful for squeezing out some extra setup turns and uh, just keeping us from dying a lot later on. I've used it a lot in casual. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's absurdly powerful. <clears throat> So we're picking up the Cleric Shrine here. This is what will allow us to skip the Merchant Shrine, which is uh, a bit of a detour for Therion. It's like a two and a half minute detour. Era. Most other single stories are going to pick up the Merchant Shrine, except for Primrose as well, because you know, it's also a detour for her. But having because Merchant's just really powerful, having two of them just, just cuts down on a lot of turns and stuff. Now if it was, it's funny how this kind of came to be, because... Uh, Mamgar er, uh, developed strategies for doing one merchant for Primrose. And for the longest time, he's been joking about doing sidestep Cleric Tressa to revive the party he, to do one <laughs> merchant. And then Dahlia later on made a route for Therion, which I'm using here, which is solo merchant and using that. So it, it was kind of a joke at first, it seemed like, but you know, it became reality. <laughs> It's been revived, if you will. Yes. <laughs> so we're going to Northreach up here, which is where Therian's Chapter 4 is. Um, there's an encounter that we're guaranteed to get on the way, which is going to be two lizards, maybe a chubby cage if we get really lucky. But, um, lucky. well, yeah, it depends on what the outcome of that is. <laughs> but um, this will also give us some experience here. Assuming that it doesn't catch me by surprise. Yep. <laughs> oh, wow. 
Yeah, they also only have one weakness, which is Axe. So they're a little bit more, uh, or less convenient to break than other enemies would be. Uh, I might be okay here, actually. <laughs> yes. Okay, Hanit doesn't really need any JP or XP at this point. I'm going to revive her anyway. Yeah, another thing about this encounter is it's... The first encounter you get in an area is often a guaranteed encounter, so we always know it's going to be these two lizards. Don't start things yeah, that's the case with the Tier 2 and Tier 3 areas. I guess even Tier 1 to some extent. There is a slight possibility for one more encounter on the way to Northreach, but we got that first encounter really late, so I don't think we're going to... Yeah, that fight's a lot scarier with one merchant, though, because if Tressa gets owned, then you're kind of in a bad spot, but I got lucky there. Yeah, and you can... Hana has an axe as her weapon, but they're higher-level enemies, so they have higher evasions, so you really want the uh, hired help to be able to break them easily. So we finally hit all the areas that we want to go to and got all the items and money, so now it's time to finally finish Therian's Chapter 2. I uh, stole a story item there and also a small pomegranate to be used later. Yeah, we can probably uh, get some donations in. There's just yeah, story sure. progression right now. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, how about $50 from Space Lancer Jericho? Sure takes some dragon stones to be running a category with a mandatory 3% steal at the end. Hope the RNG treats you kindly, Alta Biscuit. May your resets be few and your blade be unbending. <laughs> <laughs> Shoutouts to Ulbrick for having a single dollar for most of the before. <laughs> uh, we have $100 from PX Makaya. Hey, Octopath crew. Wish I could be there with you guys, but I'll just do my best putting money for the 3% counter. Good luck, and remember, if Aphelia runs to the jungle and dies to Congor, you're playing the wrong game. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, PX. Uh, $20 from Pouch. Hello, Alta and fellow Octopath runners. I was thinking about what I should say in my donation, and I have a theory on how to make things more interesting. If you get the 3% steal within five tries, I will double my donation. But if you beat your current world record of attempts, <laughs> I will triple it. Good luck, and go Octopath Esports. <laughs> <laughs> so um, my record for most for most attempts for the 3% is 199, <laughs> which is uh, very, very unlikely to happen. It's a 0.24% chance <laughs> and it's for that to happen. <laughs> Maybe later. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're getting enough banter from these people right now anyway. Yes. <laughs> so uh, we mentioned earlier that screen transitions reset the step counter. That is not the case for uh, manners like this. So when I hit the screen transition for the autosave, I'm going to just reload it so I don't get the encounter. It specifically only mansions, weirdly enough. No matter what mansion it is. Yeah, we think that the reason why this is the case is because the level danger areas in them, the areas have the same name and the same danger level, so maybe the game thinks they're the same or something. That's about the best guess we yeah, have at sense. why it is the way it is. Yeah, since the PC version came out, we have a little bit better idea about how a lot of things work, but there, there's still a lot of mysteries to unfold with this game. Like, before the PC version, it felt like that a lot of things were being done on Superstition and just because of how the randomness in this game works. Torchman Nip and Whistlewood is real. <laughs> <laughs> I always get an encounter before the torch. <laughs> nah, you have to hug the log to avoid the frog. <laughs> <laughs> so this is uh, Therian's Chapter 2 boss. It's Orlick. He's, Let's get for lack of a better term, a D&D &D nerd for... <laughs> Do it or Therian, get away from my jewel. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if he'll uh, do way. the attack. <laughs> all right, so Therian's going to use insight to draw all the attacks towards him. And Therian has a lot higher defense and health than the other characters. Like some of those attacks are would do a lot more damage to Tressa, Cyrus, or Hanet. So the first thing I'm going to do is kill off the ad, so uh, Orlik will be unprotected here. Therian doesn't really have much to do here, so I'll apply Armor Corrosive. And then I'm going to have the rest of the party throw Soul Stones to kill off the ads. Yeah. 
Let's see, I believe I got a small ice soul stone from earlier. Yep. A gift for you. <laughs> I love the lines. Ah, oh, he Dang. didn't do it. <laughs> Yeah, so Orlok does one of two moves there. He either uses augmentation on himself or casts Magic Meal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. That wow. was the six hit. <laughs> Go off there. Yeah, nice. So, a thousand spears and rain of arrows are guaranteed to hit three times, but it can hit up to six. It can hit up to eight, I believe, but. Uh, I don't believe it. I've never seen <laughs> yeah. it happen. I think I've seen a couple of sevens before. Yeah, I've seen a couple sevens. But so this is hired help veterans. It does a lot of damage <laughs> <laughs> for the low, low cost of thirty thousand. Yeah, it does an absurd amount of damage. Like there was an ongoing debate for the all main stories category whether to use the hired help or to actually, you know, use your abilities and stats to kill your enemies. Like it's just so efficient and strong. Yeah, so this, uh, all the single stories, and to a lesser extent, the uh, longer categories are pay to win. So. <laughs> and this game doesn't even have loot boxes. <laughs> what the heck? I don't know, is a 3% chance to get the item you want a loot box? <laughs> I mean, that sounds about the ratio of normal loot boxes. So. <laughs> all right, so because I killed a Kate earlier, that is an 80% steal instead of 55. So. Oh, so Alta, you're going to do the thing, right? Uh, what is that? <laughs> the thing. <laughs> I know what he's talking about. Oh, boy. You need to pet the camel, too. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we, we will do that thing later. <laughs> Therian doesn't go to Grandport, so... Uh... Oh, no, not that thing. I'm talking about the thing with the mask. Yeah. The... <laughs> Oh, that that thing. Yeah, I, I knew what he meant. Yeah, they, okay. they're donating for it, so we should give the audience what they want. <laughs> as much of it as possible. All right. Well, I need to pick up an item first before I do that. All right. <laughs> I'm, like, nowhere near that guy anymore. So. Oh, no. I got this one in practice, too. That's one angry tumble read. <laughs> uh, what? Surely we'll get away first try. No. Okay. no. <laughs> I don't even know what these are weak to. Jello would know. Well, you see, they're weak to dagger and fire. <laughs> yes. Out of my way. Jello is the only person in the world who has the all weaknesses achievement on Steam, probably. <laughs> Doesn't Lapra have it now? I, oh. I don't even know. Maybe. All right, so that, that's just uh, something that can happen with uh, higher level areas. Yeah, they gave this game some absurd Steam achievements, such as leaving the game on for 100 hours. All achievements, speedrun! Luckily, uh, this game autosaves on every transition, so even if, uh, even though I took a death there, it's not a huge time loss. Yeah, for, for the longest time, I haven't been getting an encounter on this screen. And then in the private practice room, I said I'm due for one. And then I got <laughs> one almost immediately after saying that. And then I get one here, so go figure. We'll need that accuracy bracelet for later. But uh, this is the 3% steal that people want, right? Oh, my God! <laughs> <laughs> That wasn't actually it, by that the way. That wasn't actually it. Uh, oh, man, this is, this is different now because I got this instead. Yeah, so usually what you would do there is teleport back to Wellspring <laughs> and do a steal at fair that's a 55%. But, uh, yeah, we memed. Yeah, it's funny I, because if you steal that, it actually gives you a different cutscene and different things in this area. So I guess I, that's 300 <laughs> that I need to donate. <laughs> <laughs> you ready for this? Mamgar, you see what you've done. <laughs> uh, Thank you, Mamgar. <laughs> God, if the other one's first try, I'm going to make it a thousand. <laughs> My turn now. I'll get All right. Let's see. Uh, I think Therian was at full HP. I think. Yeah, I'll check anyway. 
I still can't believe that happened. <laughs> like, I, have, I haven't gone for that particular 3% in a while because the new route takes you away from it. <laughs> All right, Therian's at full HP. He needs to tank some hits for this uh, fight made against uh, Gareth here. I'm going to save here because there are a few turn orders which can be a little sketchy. And then if I did that, I'd have to redo that 3% steal. And we don't, we don't want to do that. <laughs> Do we? Well, I mean, we're getting another one anyway, more than That's her. That's true. <laughs> you ready for this? Okay, we want Therian first and Hanit after an enemy. How does this Tresta keep going first? This, <laughs> like, this still works, but like, this has happened so many times now. Yeah, Tresta is normally the slowest, one of the slowest. She's just eager. As Magus would say, speed makes no sense in this game. <laughs> so Gareth's gimmick is that his ads will revive him out of break, so I'm going to break Gareth and kill the ads on the same turn. And to stop that from happening. Let's see. Palms. So I need to do this so Tressa can cast another Maximum Vets, and then Therian has an opportunity to Armor Corrosive here. That won't quite be enough to kill. Therian's going to dish out the last bit of damage here with HP Thief. And that's Gareth. <laughs> that fight used to be way worse. Yeah, there <laughs> was. My own... My main contribution to this game was suggesting inside strats. Yeah, the blind race that Alta mentioned during the interview that we did at uh, AGDQ, I ended up quitting on Gareth because it was so awful, and I just spent like half an hour on it and just didn't want to cooperate. All right. It is almost time, but we got one more fight and one more menu before the real 3%. <laughs> Uh, the 8%, the 3%? Yeah. Like, <laughs> if you don't mind, I'm going to sneak in for a moment here. I've got $333 from Nightmare45 saying, good luck with the 3%. I hope these threes bless you. I think I already burned my good luck. <laughs> <laughs> you ready for this? You ready for this? <laughs> so if Therian goes first, I'm going to inside. What is happening? <laughs> Okay, this actually works out if people live. Uh, okay. Aw, uh, poor trip. Uh, let's see. This should still work, I think. Mm, uh, let's see. That's not going to be quite enough here. They're scaring me. <laughs> This should be fine. I just need to insight with Therian. And then uh, the back two are weak to lightning. So Cyrus can break them. Oh, wait, that one's going to wake up. Um, okay. Uh, no. Let's see. I think... Hmm. You know, I'm just going to throw a large here and then... And then go pick up a backup. Take this. Don't start things you can't finish. All right. So I'll need to go back and pick up a, a backup soul stone in a different location just because that fight went a little weird. But luckily, there are. Oh, I can't fast travel right now. Okay, I guess I got to advance the story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this. Uh... Chatharian's Chapter 4 is a little bit odd in that regards. It doesn't let you fast travel during certain parts of it. Yeah, usually it's just Chapter 1s that don't let you do that. All right, so now this is where uh, the last uh, job menu here. Whoops. Gonna give sidestep to Tressa. Give her three cleric skills, including revive. And I need to equip some stuff too. All 
Okay, so the uh, support skill I gave Therian there increases his uh, speed by 50, and that other one for Tressa increases her max SP by 50. And those are needed for the uh, upcoming fight. I mean, I might as well do my selling here. Make sure we got enough money to uh, deal with uh, Darius, who is uh, uh, Therian's final boss. Okay, so now I can fast travel. This is a backup soul stone in Ripple Tide and that uh, oftentimes a lot of people, or a lot of runs have. Tony's mom. How's <laughs> Skydeck going on? <laughs> I was expecting that to fail. <laughs> Pokemon, once again, just... <laughs> just ruining my ideas of probabilities. All right, so now's the moment that everybody's been waiting for, the real 3%. 3%! 3%! 3%! 3%! 3%! 3%! 3%! 3%! 3%! 3%! 3%! 3%! 3%! 3%! 3%! 3%! 3%! 3%! 3%! 3%! 3%! 3%! 3%! 3%
We, we have twenty dollars from Rexton. It's always amazing to see the Octopath speedrunning community on the grand stage, showing that RPGs can be done quickly and all for an amazing cause. I wish I could have joined everyone on the couch this year, but maybe next time. Let's get that three percent first try. Well, we did that already. <laughs> That ship has sailed. <laughs> Look, you'll get it first try, 200th try. Yeah. <laughs> P.S. <laughs> P.S. Bagel bites are still better than pizza rolls. Fight me. <laughs> <laughs> you all have no taste. <laughs> They're both bad. One is just less bad than the other. <laughs> This is just funny at this point. <laughs> oh, this is amazing. We have $100 from Aquatic Link. Octopath Traveler is one of my favorite games to have come out in the last year. Such a wonderful soundtrack and so much fun to play. Really cool to see it being run at SGDQ. Good luck to Alta Biscuit. There it is. Hey. <laughs> All to steal someone's clothes. Yeah, you just <laughs> knock them out and steal his clothes. First try. <laughs> yeah, so the very funny part about this is there's another thief with a different set of clothes that's about the same percent, and if you steal his clothes, it doesn't do anything. It's just... <laughs> In that blind race we did, I kept trying to steal his clothes, and someone told me it was the wrong person. So I went to the right person and got a first try on him. Uh oh. <laughs> uh, there you go. I hope. I hope. <laughs> well, that sure is a plus. <laughs> Thanks, Escron. You're welcome. So, uh, we're not quite done with the luck yet by a long shot. We've got an 8%, 2 3%, and now Darius needs to cooperate. Darius's first attack every time wipes the party, so we have to go before him and get the break. Otherwise, we die and got to reload the save. So just when you think you're on PB pace and got the 3%, first try, second try, or whatever, you still have this to deal with. Yeah, and we gave Therian all those speed items for this reason. We just want to outspeed him as desperately as we can. Before we mention that Thousand Spears hits at least three times, we needed to hit four. Well, so yeah. this uh, fight, Dethroned Lucia is the longest single-story boss fight, I think. Hanna, yeah. what are you doing? Yeah, <laughs> you're supposed to be slow. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's a loss. Uh, yeah. Good we, need, we need Therian to go before Darius, or Therian plus somebody else would guarantee it. So let's see how much. Uh, somebody do math for me. How much do I owe on donation? Three hundred plus fifty-six times three. I think uh, somebody might have been counting. Yeah. That'd be one hundred sixty-eight. Four sixty-eight yeah. total. All right. Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. For the three hundred. No. Nope. Cyrus, what are you doing? Cyrus, come on, man. Speed makes sense. <laughs> I also like how you have the 3% steal, and then the attack that kills you on Darius is just steal item. He just flexes <laughs> his superior stealing skills on you. Yeah. All right, so now Tress is going to go first. I think okay. the problem is he didn't make Therian a dancer. He's missing that speed. <laughs> <laughs> K-pop Therian's the best skin. You ready for this? And, nope. Oh, <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, so imagine getting a 3% steal, and then this is what happens to you in, like, a really good run. Yeah, uh, another, run another runner in the community, El Magus, can attest to this. <laughs> He's uh, one of the best runners for this game, and just how many times he got, like, within first five tries, 3%, only for Darius to take it away from him. It was very funny doing the uh, Therian Weekly, because... You the people in front weren't in front for long. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. <laughs> and to think this fight used to be worse, you didn't used to put speed items or speed passives on Therion in this fight. Yeah, you used to sell the Viper Dagger. <laughs> you know, just, do I, I have it equipped, right? Okay, yeah, I do. <laughs> You know, whenever this happens so many times, and everyone's like, did I forget to do that? <laughs> Listen, speed doesn't exist. <laughs> Apparently it doesn't. 
<laughs> Only for Darius. And for Hanit and Cyrus, apparently. Uh, hey, okay, hey, we, hey. We, this wait. Bit, we still need four hits here. Yeah, that's true. Oh, oh my god, he just went in. Oh, oh. wow, that was seven hits. <laughs> <laughs> he was angry. <laughs> All right, so the first break is basically just setting up the rest of the fight here. I told you you could get seven hits. <laughs> but not eight. Yeah. Okay, I need to remember that I have an extra M. Okay, so Tresla is going to set up some sidesteps here. That allows her to dodge physical attacks. Nope. Oh, I almost did that again. <laughs> um, so Armor Cross with the lower their armor. And then Hanit's going to apply Lake Hold Trap to make sure Darius goes last forever. Except uh, Lake Hold Trap doesn't apply on the turn that they wake up from break. Yeah, they'll always go first, no matter what. Oh no, everybody else died. <laughs> what will you do? The other thing it does is it guarantees these people revive in front of them, too. It's very similar to the strategy used on Alfin's final boss. So apply more leg hold trap just to make sure he keeps going less. It just adds more turns to it. Can I get the blind? Okay. All right. Got a chance for some nonsense to happen here. Okay, armor corrosive. All right. So we're finally ready to start killing him. Was that three sets of vets and some change? Yeah, then soul stones and Therion's damage. All right. Trying this. If we get. A little lucky here. Some people might die because he's uh, blinded. I'm hoping Therion. Oh, oh my God. Wow. <laughs> oh, this could be quick kill, actually. Oh, I don't have poison damage. Maybe I'll get lucky with this. All right. I should have Thousand Spears there instead, but oh well. Dang. Just to make sure this lands. Tressa can miss here. <laughs> Alright. You're going first anyway, so you can just palm. Alright, that should be all the soul stones I need. I've got a few extra. I appreciate it. <laughs> so is it going to happen again? Because he's still blinded from the dancers. Oh, of course, the character that matters the least survived. <laughs> wow, I, I'm hurt, honestly, as the representative of Cyrus. In this fight. Okay. Okay. Yeah, at least it's not Alpha. <laughs> Who? Who? The game's Octopus. <laughs> uh, why am I... Uh, oh, no. Um... Okay, I'm gonna have to do this. I'm not sure. Oh, it was revived. Okay, I see what I did wrong. I should still be able to be okay. Oh, he's, she's still gonna get attacked. I should have. Oh, wait, never mind. Oh, what? Oh, what is happening? Yeah, oh, man. Like, hold. Oh, that's Leg hold works as long as they don't add more turns. If they add more turns, it messes up the leg hold turn. Uh, unfortunately. It was the revitalizing jam that I needed to do there because otherwise Tressa didn't have enough BP to do exactly that. Uh, all right. You got this! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One wrong, one wrong move and it's... Oh, uh, there's Haunted again. Uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, all right. She's just mad she didn't win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like this. I am sorry. 
Yeah, Darius has 11 turns optimally, so... <laughs> And aside from Darius killing us a bunch before that point, this was going pretty well. <laughs> oh well. What can you do? You uh, sometimes mistakes happen. Still got the optional 3% first try. Yeah, they can't take that away from me. Haunt it. Come Haunt on. It. <laughs> She's really jealous right now. Yeah. Also to note, without blind, it, it there's like no chance to dodge yeah. an attack. Evasion does nothing against bosses. Well, it does. It's just we're very low level. We have no evasion, basically. Nah. Yeah, I think what threw me off on the last fight is that uh, Tresta wasn't low on SP because everybody survived that one sweep. <laughs> nope. Uh, did we got a donation or two? I can squeeze something in. Uh, I've got $57 from Disc Skyer. One dollar for every attempted steal. The grind is real. Hype! Hype. Uh, we have $25 from Shockham. Dog barks. Dog wags the tail. Dog likes the belly rub. Dog eats a treat. No matter what happens, always pet the dog. <laughs> Hunnit really wants this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we have $100 from Stanley Hudson's second toaster. Greetings from the back of the room. Love some of that sweet, sweet SGD hue. What a great cause. Let there never be borders for doctors. Never keep them from providing care to the lost and seemingly forgotten. Let's see some of that task bot Celeste. And also, to my cousin in Boston, buy a Switch already. <laughs> Oh, this is extraordinarily bad luck I've had with this fight today. We need to make up for that first 3% somehow. I guess. <laughs> that that or Hanit just has to take all the spotlight. <laughs> okay, we have $5 from Level 1 Bar. Hey, guys. Loving the content as always. We have you streaming in our bar slash arcade all week. The patrons love it. Keep up the good work. Therian would appreciate that. Yeah. You ready for that? Where's the nearest tavern? <laughs> Okay, this is guaranteed. Good. And now you can play the video game. You show them, Cyrus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so another thing we didn't touch on is that uh, Thousand Spears and Reign of Arrows have their own unique accuracy mechanic. It's not affected by evasion or anything else. What next? Try and this. All right, got to set up this one. So armor corrosive. How about this? <laughs> Well, we get more of this music. This is one of the best tracks in the game, too. Mm -hmm. The other thing about Darius is I don't know if I'd call him the hardest, but he's definitely one of the harder Chapter 4 bosses. If you were to try to beat the game using only items, you would pose quite a problem. <laughs> <laughs> who would want to try doing that? Yeah, who would, uh, who would want to do that? <laughs> So, <laughs> there's someone in the community named Jello. He uh, famously <laughs> has tried to do a Soul Stones only playthrough, <laughs> where the only source of damage can be Soul Stones. And unsurprisingly, Darius is a uh, big problem with that since he steals your items. So, um, so for you to get through that using only Soul Stones. You have to have everybody go before Darius. Now he's blinded. Let's hope for uh, some more misses. <laughs> Poor Therian. All right, good. <laughs> you know, Cyrus got hit at all by one of his sweeps. Uh. 
Just uh, the first one. Yeah. Alright. <laughs> yeah, Lynn can miss. Thank you for your contribution, Lynn. To this is why we're not petting the cat. <laughs> Oh, oh, that was that almost. Scared me yeah. A second. <laughs> All right. The right item this time. <laughs> and Cyrus's turns are done. Try and this. I think I need one more medium, but I should be okay. Hanit has a free turn at the end. I was afraid that might miss too. <laughs> All right, don't forget to palm El Tressa this time. <laughs> I did that too many times in practice. Nope. <laughs> Yeah, there's usually a lot of things you're trying to maintain in a lot of the Chapter 4 fights, and it's really easy to just overlook one thing and just lose the entire fight because of it. Yeah, just like last time. But that's, that's why we uh, use notes a lot when we're doing runs. All right, there we go. Yeah. Time isn't yet. quite yet. It'll be the last cutscene outside of Ravis Manor, so not this one, but yeah, when, when the bar fills up on. Yeah, when the bar, fi the next bar fills up here. All right, and time. time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, before we get to the dog incentive, I just want to say that, uh, oh man, <laughs> this was just a pleasure. <laughs> I'm just so glad to be up here with my friends I'm doing this. <laughs> Fortnite. <laughs> like... We submitted this together, and that was, you know, regardless of who won this bid war, even though we were clearly going for Therion, like, in the end, we would have been happy for anybody, except for Alphen. Alphen yeah. but <laughs> <laughs> I submitted Alphen. I didn't want Alphen. <laughs> Sorry, Crimson. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> Man, I didn't expect to get choked up there, but <laughs> just thanks, everybody. Yeah, and thanks again for putting over twenty-four thousand dollars into the incentive for the, like yeah. both incentives for this game. <laughs> no thanks to Darius. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this should have a file here where I can go uh, go to Grandport. And this is a a Galdera file that I have here. But whoa, whoa spoilers! Oh, spoilers! Oh, wow, we, we can go oh. be, we can go beat up Winneheld if we want. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. Oh, let's see, uh, Alfin's with us, right? Yeah, Alfin's with us. He's a dog person. Alfin's not real. Well, he'll, he'll be <laughs> real for a little bit here. And while we're heading over there, I'm just going to say we have $333.33 from Sean222. <laughs> for that amazing 3% first try steal. Way to steal the show. <laughs> All right, so... I see the head icon. <laughs> oh, yeah, it, it's real, right? <laughs> but anyway, uh, if you inquire or scrutinize the dog, you see that he's a very good dog, a happy mutt with not a care in the world. He is a good dog, but to be fair, all, God, uh, all dogs are good dogs, and a pox upon he who dares say otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh... Did, did that count? Did that count technically as petting the dog? Is the is it's the Twitter I, 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 is the Twitter account going to get mad at us for I, that? I, I have my questions about this personally. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think it's kind of questionable. Okay, well, there's another way we can pet a dog. <laughs> okay, it'll just yep. take just take a minute. 
Got to go pet the Hagen dogs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, spoilers. Yeah, oh, whoops. All right. Uh, so, yeah, uh, this will be a consolation for Hanit coming in second, too. We'll start her uh, story here. Encore with Hanit's story. The hunt story. is on. Since she wanted to be the star of the show so much during Darius. All right, it's this one, right? Uh, I think so. Yeah. Might be one. I think it's one more. Okay. In all that time. Oh. No, it's not. All right. It's oh, maybe it's the, I think it's this one. It okay. should be here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is it. All right. I... I... Yes, yes. Imagine if this game didn't have cutscene skipping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this would be a lot of the experience here. But oh, is it, oh on? it might be the one after the. Okay, right, well, this will this will be. Is, is it okay if we do this? It should be really quick after this. Now, let us hunt him. Let the hunt begin. Uh, it's a. We just fight these two guys. Yeah, we have to get to the cutscene with the other dog. Yeah. Well, right. while we're doing this, I'll just say we have uh, $30 from Climbing Coder. Uh, haven't run Octopath in a while, but still wanted to show my support during a run of the f my first ever 12-hour challenge game. Good luck on the rest of the run, Alta. And don't forget to press plus to hear travel banter. Now, let us hunt him. Right. What next? <laughs> what this fox is my best friend, by the way. <laughs> what? He's I thought, my best friend. I thought I was your best friend. Uh oh. <laughs> All right. All right. Is the fox likes pizza rolls, so that's the deal breaker. <laughs> All right, I don't remember. It was after. I think it was after this one. All right. Yeah. Hello there. Hello there. Hello <laughs> there. <laughs> I think it might have been that second one, but I th he should show up again. Yeah, I know it's. A I know there's one after the fight too, but we don't want to. Uh, we might have skipped it from that one. Oh, well. We pet the cat and s we pet the fox. <laughs> Foxes are almost dogs. Uh, if we restart the story, it will be real. If it's the second cutscene, it'll be really quick. I think, but I'm. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's not this one. Uh, we do have a $250 donation from Jason Thien. Thank you for all your hard work. Heart. Yeah, it's that one we skipped. Yeah, okay. We made sure of where it was before the run, and we already forgot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh... See, so, yeah, I guess we're getting three dog pets in this. <laughs> all right, so it's after this first one. Yeah, because it's a Zonta's dog. Yeah. Alright. Hopefully is this one. I don't think we have enough time to <laughs> it should be this one if a, uh, to look for it. <laughs> Even in cutscene, she is long winded. Mm -hmm. <laughs> To be fair, it's Zanta being long-winded here, not haunted herself. That's fair. That's but, where she learned it from. Yeah. She does describe him as being long-winded. <laughs> Never had... But it... Oh, we pet the cat. Uh... <laughs> 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 Uh, I guess it's the one after. Or, yeah, or, uh, yeah, right. I don't. That's weird. Okay. All right. Well. Uh, well, I don't know where it is. We pet the cat. <laughs> we pet the cat and implied that we pet the dog. You know, in a way, there's a dog inside <laughs> all of us. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thank, thanks for having us. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Alrighty, that was Octopath Traveler, Therion's single story, Therion, uh, run by Alta Biscuit.
Uh, you're watching Summer Games Done Quick 2019, powered by Twitch, raising money for Doctors Without Borders. Uh, uh, I'm going to send you over to a few words from Twitch. You're watching Summer Games Done Quick 2019. We have a $100 anonymous donation, which just says dogs. Uh, we have a $40 donation from Matra. Greets to the Rockman crew. Can't wait for Minus Infinity. Also, shout outs to my dudes on QuakeNet IRC. Yes, we are still here. Drop us a line, Kirby Master. Uh, we've got $50 from Sebastian155. Uh, the only thing better than TaskBot is more TaskBot. Give me varies. Just to give you an update of where that's at, we need $175,000 for TaskBot to play Celeste Altberries. We currently have $43,841.97. Uh, so be sure to get your donations in if you want to see that. All right, uh, we're going to send you over to a few words from our sponsors. Cyber Games Done Quick is brought to you by MAGFest. Returning to the West Coast this September 13th through 15th with MAGFest, MAGWest, in San Jose, California. MAGWest will feature free play arcades, live video game concerts, tournaments, tabletop games, community jamming, much more. Use the promotion code SGDQ2019 to receive $15 off your badge for MAGWest. 
Magfest Incorporated is a non-profit that holds music and gaming events year-round with a flagship event every January in Washington, D.C. Super Magfest, the flagship event, pulls in 24,000 people for four days of non-stop gaming and video game music concerts. Visit their company website at magwest.org. You're watching Summer Games Done Quick 2019. In just a few minutes, we'll be having a run of Rockman 4 Minus Infinity by Kumba. Between now and then, we'll be having an interview by Darkman with Colonel Fatso, Fast At Attack, and QTC 6 with the runners of Mega Man 3 and Mega Man 11. Welcome back to Summer Games Done Quick 2019. I am Darkman78, and with me here, I have three fantastic runners. We have the uh, upcoming runners of some of the Mega Man games that you are going to be seeing today. So we are joined by Colin Fatso, who is playing Mega Man 3, and then we have QTT6 and Fast.cc, who are going to be playing uh, racing against each other in the Mega Man 11, so the last game of the Mega Man block. Fellas, welcome. Hi. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so... I'll start off with you, uh, Fatso. So you're kind of the first one of the uh, three here that are going to be playing with Mega Man 3. Uh, talk to me a little bit about kind of playing Mega Man 3 at a GDQ because it's, it's a game that I feel like involves kind of getting into a rhythm early on to make sure you're doing well. So how do you kind of balance that with, like, of course, the nerves of being on a GDQ stage? Uh, well, you know, it's just... Uh, <clears throat> it's all about feeling prepared, mm -hmm. right? Um, so... I've done a ton of practice runs backstage in the mm -hmm. practice room. I did a ton of practice at home, and I just need to uh, feel confident that my preparation is enough to get sure. me through any sort of difficulties that might come. Mm -hmm. And especially since there are some mistakes that can lose, you know, 20, 30 seconds. Right. Uh, I'm just going to try and be extra careful around those places to make sure that I don't have any epic spills or anything. <laughs> yeah, that's always good. Um, so, you know, people at home may be more familiar with your GDQ runs in the past, generally in like the X series. You know, you've played like Mega Man X, Mega Man X2 before on the GDQ stage. Um, and while you have done Mega Man 3 before, it hasn't been in a solo setting. So do you feel like this is maybe like a different environment for you, or do you feel like you can kind of rely upon your past Mega Man experience? Well, both, kind of. Okay. Like, this is a completely new experience, as in like... Um, <clears throat> I haven't played this game mm -hmm. on this biggest stage right. solo before, mm -hmm. but um, I know that I'm capable of putting out, you know, a decent run no matter what. Cool. And, you know... Given my preparation. Yeah, and at the very least, you know, all you have to do is just make sure you don't do worse than him. So. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thanks, Dark Man. Appreciate it. Yeah, no, no problem. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right, so cool. So we'll kind of switch gears a little bit. We'll get into Mega Man 11, so... Uh, we have QTT, who is from Taiwan, so he made the journey all the way out here. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, so yeah we can give him a round of applause for that. That's really awesome. <laughs> and then we have Fast, who made the journey all the way from California. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, either one of you can take this question. Tell me a little bit about Mega Man 11, because, you know, it is the newest game in the series. And from a speedrun perspective, it definitely plays a lot different than some of the other classic Mega Man games. Yeah, it sure does. Um, I mean, we haven't had a new Mega Man game since 2010 in the Classic series, and that was, you know, five years before I started speedrunning. So um, we didn't really know what to expect when uh, they said, oh, yeah, Mega Man 11 is coming. <laughs> I, I just I couldn't believe that that was actually happening. So um, it's, it's true to its roots. Like, it feels like a classic Mega Man game, but at the same time, it's modernized in a lot of ways. Sure. And uh, you have just a fantastic weapon set along with the ability to choose any yeah. weapon with the right analog stick at any time and have multiple weapons on screen. And yeah. uh, it just allows for so much tech, mm -hmm. and it's such a fast game. It's just, it just feels beautiful to play. Yeah, absolutely. Um, kind of elaborating on that, we do have the gear system, which is, you know, a unique <laughs> to Mega Man 11, which allows you to either slow down the game or, you know, use a power weapon, uh, which you use a lot of throughout the, uh, the, throughout the speed run. How do you kind of juggle doing all of that at once? Because a lot of buttons seem like they're being pressed at the same time. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's I mean, kind of painful for with, with controller. Though. <laughs> <laughs> so that's actually, that's actually a great lead-in, because QTT, you use a keyboard, yeah. not a controller for this game. Yeah. Why do you use a keyboard? Because like, the first time I, I made the Mega Man mm -hmm. games, I just used to play. Just feel like, and I feel 
keyboard is comfortable for me. So like, first of all, like my first Mega Man speeder game is mm -hmm. Mega Man X4. Okay. Yeah. So it's like that is the time I start to use keyboard so far. So it's like maybe five years or okay. Yeah. So, so yeah, I, I just feel feels comfortable. Okay. Yeah, I I figure out how to. Let it work on Mega Man 11. I see. Yeah. Okay. So now, you know, going on to the race, you know, you two are pretty close in times. So yeah. you're separated by about 25 seconds with your personal best. Um, do, do you, Fast, do you feel like that 25 second uh, head start is, is like an advantage or do you feel like you two are really close in terms of who's going to come on top? I mean, I feel theoretically like it would be an advantage if, uh, <laughs> <laughs> if it wasn't this guy next to me. Um, we, we had a lot of races in the practice room and I mean, a handful of them were within like 10 seconds or so. So I'm yeah. expecting a close race. Uh, we, QTT's times were like just dead consistent okay. every time um, and mine were a little up and down but <laughs> for the most part they were they were really close races so okay. I'm, I'm hoping that we'll be able to you know provide a race that uh, has has some drama going into the end gotcha. okay well we're gonna we have one time for one more question and I need to enlist the services of one Colonel Fatso right here so Fatso we have a we have to draw the line right here we have keyboard versus controller what advice can you give to either of them depending on who you want to win <laughs> you know, when I mean want to win I mean specifically based on the device they use so you got to tell them right now why. You give them a pep talk. You got 10 seconds. <laughs> Nine, eight, seven. Um, press lots of buttons faster. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. There we go. So we got the, we got, we see Fasto is clearly a fan of the controller, but that's okay. I'm a fan of the keyboard. So KTT, you press that button really fast too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that's going to do it for us. So once again, make sure you tune in for this entire Mega Man block, which is going to be starting with Rockman 4 minus infinity. And uh, once again, I have Colin Fatso, who's doing the Mega Man 3 run, and we have QTT6 and FastSCC, who are going to be racing Mega Man 11 at the conclusion of the block. But for now, it's going to do it. I am Darkman78, and we're going to throw it right back to the host. Well, welcome back, everyone, to Summer Games Done Quick 2019, powered by Twitch. My name is Sakura Tsubasa, and I'm going to be your host for the next hour or so. Playing, uh, we have Kumba, who's going to be playing Rockman for Minus Infinity, coming up next here. But before that, we have a couple donations to read. We got a $20 donation from Kyle Precise that says, There was a speedrunner named Kumba who cleaned up ROM hacks like a Roomba. He had a special affinity for minus infinity, but was always so positive. Happy Stone. We have a $250 donation from Mr. Cab142 that says, let's go Kumba, dive into the Mega Man block with Skull Second and drill those robot masters. Brighten Toad Man's day, clear the dust off Pharaoh, and enter the ring with Dr. Wily. Good luck to all the runners.